big shkoyach to it's anonymous. Can we say? We're allowed to say it's Ari, we're allowed to say it's Ari. Okay, it's okay. No, big shkoyach to Ari to, for putting this together, for sponsoring it, for Yaakov for putting this beautiful flyer. It's a beautiful flyer, last minute. Not just that, but you order the food. Allah, good tzadachim. No, tzadik should be, uh, we should be zaychet to have the tzadik as a melt yosha for us. This is our second year being able to be zaychet to do this, to get together on the art site. So it's a tzadik for all of us, it's a tzadik for Kali Yisrael to have tzadikim like that. So we should be zaychet that the tzadik should continue to focus his attention on us. You know, I mentioned this, uh, I mentioned this once that a, a couple years ago, I think it was, I don't know how long ago, someone sent me a video from Vichemeyer that was like before COVID, whatever, randomly Vichemeyer, it wasn't by the art site. Ravitch Meyer just like, you know, mentioned to uh, his chavr that he wants to go to Karistir. So he's in Karistir and uh, and he's davening by the Tzian. And after he's davening, so he turned, this is what the video, the video showed, that he turned to one of the people over there and he said that you should know, it's not the shot that like all of a sudden, out of nowhere, like Chal Yisrael become like infatuated or we start to pay attention to certain Siddiqui. He said it's fakir, it's the other way. That in Shemayim, the tzaddik, for whatever reason, decides to pay attention to us. And so Mimela, he's looking at us, so we look back at him. And Rav Shemayim said, and love dafka will it always be like that. Maybe something else will get the tzaddik's attention, and he'll turn back around in Ganeid, and he won't, and he'll, and he'll stop, uh, you know, gazing upon us after Chaparayin as long as that takes place. So the fact that, you know, the Rav Shemayim, that that, uh, that uh, Rav Shaila's, you know, it, it, I remember years ago, like you know. Uh, going to let's say Williamsburg to give Sherman things like that, and you know they would have like uh, for bringing a suit a suit the yard site for Abshaila. I say probably never heard of Abshaila at the time, and all it was it was by Sadam Chassidim. That's what it was, you know. But now that it's by everyone, and it's like a common thing, like everyone, it's not a chiddush anymore. It's like a dover pasuk. It means the tzaddik is still paying attention to us, and as long as the tzaddik is paying attention to us, so we have to pay attention back. It will be a schus for us. All right, so last year when I, uh, when I spoke about the tzaddik, I spoke about a particular aspect. It was uh, something that at least I think we all recognize as something unique, and that was the Indian of Rav Shaila with mice. All right, so I figured uh, along that lines, so we'll, we'll, let me take for today, just for a few minutes, another Indian that is a little bit unique to Rav Shaila, and to speak about that, Nekudna. So we all know that it's, it's well known that Rav Shaila was, was Poel Yeshua's on an unbelievable scale, through food. It was through food. Everyone knows, you know, whether it be, you know, uh, challah rolls, whether it be through sugar or some, you know, different things. And, 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 he, and he knew that was where his kaiach was coming from. It was in order to be mashpi and to bring Yeshua and Nisim, Mamish Nisim, Nisim going to Yidin through food. There's even a Maiset. It is not a Maifis story. It's just one of the stories that there was a group of, uh, of Bachram that were traveling to somewhere else. They were traveling through Karastir. And so uh, they were there on Shabbos. And Rishayla noticed them. He went over to them. He said, so where, where are you staying? And so he said, the particular house that they're staying by. And Rishayla got very upset. He said, in Karastir, everyone knows you have to eat by Shaila. You have to eat by Shaila. And he was like mocked about it. Why? What's well, Because he wants to have another opportunity to be Machnes Archim. Because he knew that there's Yeshuas, there's Inyanim, that he has to be Payal through food. So he needs uh, Yidin to come and partake of that, of that Indian. So this Indian of a tzaddik giving over food and shirayim and brachas coming from food, that's not necessarily so unique. We find this by many tzaddikim. But what is ironic is that Rav Shaila himself was known as, in this, personally, a very, very big parch. Very much, very much into fasting. It was known that even though in the pictures it looks like he's a little bit larger, like he wore baggy clothing, he himself was mamish skinny as anything because he was mamish always with fasting. So what we find is this ironic nakuda is that the tzaddik himself is completely removed from all gashmias. Completely removed from all gashmias. Some tzaddikim are not like that, right? Some tzaddikim, their Indian is to eat and to be involved in gashmias. And so therefore, I guess that makes sense. If they're involved in gashmias, then their, their pulas come through gashmias. But this ironic Indian of the tzaddik being himself a complete parish from gashmias, but then the Yeshua's that he brings dafka through gashmias is a little bit funny. We find this again, so it's, it's something that you find very shy. I love it, it's by other Siddiquim too. Lamashal, in more recent times, you have uh, uh, Baba Sali. Right? Baba Sali was also known that his Yeshua, he was piled with making Lechaim with Iraq and Surah Rishchaydesh, was always with food. But he himself was always fasting. He was a tiny, skinny, frail person. It's also this ironic Zach that he himself, his, his personal Avaida, was completely fasting and disconnected from food. But the Yeshua, he was with Yidin, was dafka through food. 
the truth is we find this by those couple tzaddikim, there's other tzaddikim as well, but even in Chazal we find, we find tzaddikim that were like this too. For example, um, uh, the Gemara says about Rav Chanida ben Daisa. The Gemara says, uh, it's a whole nice in the Gemara Tainus where this, where this line, the context of it, but the Gemara says that Abbaskal came out and said by Rav Chanida ben Daisa that Kal ha'ilam nizayn b'shvil chanina b'ni. The whole world gets their parnasa and all Yeshuas and all physical parnasa and shafa comes b'shvil chanina b'ni comes because of chanina ben Daisa. And as the Noemi Lamelch teaches, b'shvil, shvil is a, is a pipeline. No, it's not just in the schos of Rav Chanina ben Daisa. He was the tzaddik that was meshpia this. And not necessarily did he have like a tish that he gave out l'chaims like that, but in Ruchni, it's all chef of Parnassah. The entire generation was coming from Rav Chanina ben Daisa. The Chanina b'ni, but Chanina himself, said the Baskel, Daila b'kav charuvim, all he eats all week long, and he's happy with that. That's his avayda, is only a certain measure of carbs, of boxer. So his whole Indian, his personal avayda, was mamish precious and fasting and disconnected from Gashmias and Parnassah and in Yonim of, of food. But that stuff gives him to be mashpia in that way. So it's a little bit of a funny thing. Okay. Now the truth is, we find this uh, similar type of steer, I guess you can say, in terms of Tyra as well. I'll give an example. So everyone knows, like, Rechaim Knievsky, right? So Rechaim Knievsky was, was not, for many things. But the, f- the first thing that stands out is that he's like the, the, uh, the, 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 the standard and the, not that I shouldn't say the standard, he's the, uh, the he, he represents like Hasmada, right? Gold standard. The gold standard, right? The gold standard of Hasmada, not, not Bittal Tyra. In the times of Chazal by the Tanoim Mashal, there was also a tzaddik who was the epitome of everything that's not Bittal Tyra, of everything that's Hasmada, of constantly learning all day long without any Bittal, without any other involvement, and that was Rishim Baruchai. The Gemara says, as he, he's even called, Rishim Baruchai the Chaver of Terasim Umnasam, the title of someone who's learning all day without any distraction, without any interruptions, that, the, the description of such a person in Chazal is, like Rishim Baruchai and his Chavir. So Rishim Baruchai is that stand. The Pella is, and we all know, right, it's the Gemara, that he comes out of the cave, right, coming to like Boim, he comes out of the cave, and he and his son, they see people working, and they're destroying everything, so he's like, Asmada, never stop learning. The Pella is, there's a Gemara that says like this, a Rishim Baruchai said, it says in Pasuk, you have to learn Taira day and night. Said Rishim Baruchai, if, how do you fulfill that mitzvah? If a person says, Yidav and Shach, Yidav and Meirv, so it means he said Kriyashma in the morning, he said Kriyashma at night, said Rishim Baruchai, a little bit of learning in the morning, and a little bit of learning at night, even if it's not, even don't think of it as learning, you're davening, but that's also called learning, because it's a parsha of Torah, it's Kriyashma. Said Rishim Baruchai, you're being Yaitse, the mitzvah of the Gisav Yom Velayim. So the Gemara says, the Gemara records such a statement, and the Gemara says, Rishim Baruchai says such a thing, but you can't publicize that, because people are going to abuse it. The Gemara says that that was the original stance, that this statement to Rav Shimon has to be kept a little bit private. The Gemara says, Rav Amar, but Rav, a little bit later, the later generations of Amaroim said, Adra, but we have to be mefarsing this in order to be mechazik, those people that are not connected to learning, that they should realize that they are connected to the Takarat Bimakai. But here's the Pella. The after Rav Shimon Rav whole Indian is, is learning Torah all day, all night. That was his personal Indian. And what comes out of him? What's the, what's the Shirayan that he's giving us? Is the opposite of that. It's that all you need is Krishna and Krishna and night and your God's design. So it's the opposite of who he is. It's the opposite of his whole personal avayda. So what's this Indian of, of what he's telling the Rabbim is the opposite of what his personal avayda is. And understand, when a tzaddik says something in Torah, especially in Chazal, it wasn't just Tami saying an idea and it's disconnected from who he is. That, that's Hashbat Shefa. That was a Shefa. That was a, a, an emes, a light that Rishim is bringing to the world. Every, the Rav Tzadik has a klal, he says that, you know, Abaya, for example, said many more vertlach than what's recorded in Bavli, right? So why do we only have this, the statements from Abaya that we have in Bavli and not more? So Rav Tzadik says a klal, he says that the only statements that are recorded in Bavli, Yishami, and Chazal from the, from the Tzadikim, were statements that were coming from such a deep place inside the Tzadik that they were almost as if they were compelled to say it. It was, a, it was flowing out of them. But a vart that Abaye said, it was just like a vart, that's not recorded in Chazal. So if you have such a statement in, from Rishim Baichai, the Rishim Baichai is recorded in Shas as saying that you're Mekai the mitzvah of Talmud Torah by just saying Shema in the morning and Shema at night, that means that was a vart that was flowing out of him. So how could it be that a vart is flowing out of him? And his whole Indian is the opposite of that. His whole Indian is learning Torah all day light without any break. I'll give you another example. 
There's a Gemara in Hedron, okay? It starts off a little bit harsh, but you'll see what happens. There's a Gemara in, 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 in there's a Pusik in, in Yeshai, the Pusik says like this. Lachin Yerchiva Sha'ol Nafsha. Hashem says, therefore, Gehenim Sha'ol, the depths, open your mouth wide. Upara Piha, and prepare to swallow. Levli Chaik. Gehenim, open your mouth wide and prepare to swallow. Those Yidin that don't have a Chaik, that don't have a mitzvah. So that's what the Pasuk says. Amr Eshlakish. So Eshlakish teaches the Pasuk. What does it mean that a Gehenim is prepared to swallow someone levli chayk? Said Eshlakish, it means that even if that Jew left over one mitzvah that he didn't fulfill, Gehenim should be prepared to swallow. So the Gehenim prepares to swallow, levli chayk means a Yid that left over one chayk. He did all 612, whatever. He did all mitzvahs his whole life. One mitzvah he left over and he was mavatal. Gehenim is going to swallow him up. Is this like Rishlakish? Amr Rabbi Yechanan. So Rabbi Yechanan responds to Rishlakish. Like Nichol Merad Amr Tachi. The Rabbanu Shalom doesn't like you touching the pasuk like that. As he says, it's interesting, right? He doesn't say you're wrong. Mm-hmm. He says the Rabbanu Shalom doesn't like you touching the pasuk like that. Because again, a vart that a tzaddik says is flowing from within himself. So there's truth to that. But Rabbi Yechanan says you should hold that in. Like that's not the truth that the Rabbanu Shalom wants to come out. Rather, says Rabbi Yechanan. Ella, rather, you have to touch the pasuk like this. Gehenim is prepared to swallow. The Gehenim is going to swallow a Jew that doesn't even have one, that doesn't have even one mitzvah. But as long as you have one mitzvah, so Gehenim is not going to swallow you up. So he, Rabbi Yechon is touching in a more of a positive way that Gehenim will swallow Vli Chaik. Vli Chaik means that Yid that doesn't have any Chaik. But if you have one mitzvah to your name, you'll be fine. It's a pella. Rabbi Yechon and Rishlakish, everyone knows, Rishlakish is about Shuva. Rabbi Yechon is a tzaddik, he's a So you would think, between Rabbi Yechon and Rishlakish, which one should be more sensitive to Yidin that struggle with Yitzhars? Vada Rishlakish, right? Rishlakish struggled with Yitzhars his whole life. So you would think, if Rishlakish is going to say over a vart, it's going to be a type of vart that'll, like, uh, that, that'll be more understanding to the matzav of a Yid that doesn't, uh, that's not a, a big tzaddik. And Rabbi Yechanan, on the other hand, he's the tzaddik Yisrael Oilam. Mean, he doesn't know what a Yitzhar is. So Rabbi Yechanan, we can understand if he gives over a vart, that's a little bit more strict and harsh because he doesn't know what it means. But Chalat is struggle. But Avir Tfakert, Rabbi is about tshuva, who should be more sensitive. He's saying a vart, which is what that Gehenim is going to swallow a yid, even if you leave over one mitzvah, Gehenim is going to swallow you up. Rabbi Yechanan, who's tzaddik Yisrael Oilam, who never left off a mitzvah, right? Rabbi Yechanan is, is a tzaddik. The Gemara says that he would stand by the mikveh of the, when the ladies walk into the mikveh. And he would say, think about me when you're in the mikvah, that you should be zeichet to have children like me. And the Gemara says such a thing, like, you know, that's not so tzniyistic. And Rabbi Yochanan says, I'm not worried about the Yitzhar. I'm not worried, I'm coming from Yitzhar Tzadik. Rabbi Yochanan said, I'm not worried about the Yitzhar. So such a thing, he doesn't even have a musik of what a Yitzhar is. And so such a, and, and Rabbi Yochanan is giving over a taira, which is more understanding to Yidin to have Yitzhar. So it's like, again, fighter, it's, it's the opposite of what you think. Okay, see, so here's the Yitzhar. The Yitzhar is like this. The Rabbanu Shalom wants to give us all good things. The Rabbanu Shalom wants to give us Parnasa and Shefa, Berevach. The Rabbanu Shalom wants to give all good things. But here's the problem. The problem is, in the language of the Mkubalim, the problem is that every single one, not, I shouldn't say every single one of us, but there, there are situations in life where a Yid has Klippas attached to him. Klippas attached to him. So, Lamashal, if let's say, let's say a person, I know this little, maybe this is not, I mean, if you're finished eating, maybe it's okay. Just, let's say a person has like a parasite, right? There's such a thing, a parasite, right? So everything you eat, obviously, it gives you energy, but it's also being siphoned off by the parasite, which really gets you sicker, ultimately. So there is such a thing spiritually that people, that we have parasites. We have this, we have these gorillas on our backs, just siphoning off kaiches. And the Rabbanu Shalom wants to give us kaiches, he wants to give us shefa, and he wants to give us all good things in this world. But the problem is that as long as a person has klipas that are surrounding them <coughs> and being yonik, and being yonik from them, then the Rabbanu Shalom's kaviyachal's hands are tied because he's going to give you shefa, he's going to give us shefa. But the problem is, yeah, it'll be good for you, but ultimately it won't be because at the same time the parasite is siphoning off those kaiches too, and it's going to be self destructive. That's on a, on, a, so on, a, on a Kabbalistic level, like the Lashonis that they would use is that a person's in that matzah where the klipas are being yoinik. The klipas are, are, are siphoning off kaiches from you. So therefore, because of that, the Rabbanu Shalom, the, the shef of Elikus has to, be, has to be pulled back because the Rabbanu Shalom isn't willing to allow his light to come into your life if it's just going to be feeding the other side. 
on a very practical, what is that, how does that, what does that look like down here? So it looks like what the Gemara says, Lamashal. The Gemara says a harsh statement, but we see it. I mean, we'll, we'll see the tikkun for this, but the Gemara says that Bederach Klal, again, I'm saying this not as a way to be Mekatri, but just quoting a piece of Gemara. The Gemara says that poverty, Bederach Klal, is better for Yidin than wealth. Because on a collective level, when, when there's, when there's Nachkos, when there's, when, when, when there's difficulties, our eyes are turned to heaven. But when there's an unbelievable amount of Shafa, then what happens to that Shafa? We lose sight of it, and, and uh, our eyes don't turn to heaven so naturally. The reason for that is, is because we're surrounded by Klippas, so all the Shafa that comes is also being mechazik and building up your own Yetzar, right? So, you, you know, the Rebbe wants all the energy to go to Yetzar Toi. But when I said, if you have a Yetzar, it's, it's going to be Yetzar too. So because of that, the Rebbe says, okay, so I'm not, so not going to give. So this is where Tzadik can come in. So Tzadik can come, like the Gemara says that, uh, it's an amazing thing, the Medrash says that Rabban Shalom and Moshe Rabbeinu made a pact with each other. It's a pal de Gazach. After, after the Egel, so the Rabban Shalom removed his presence from Ka Yisrael. So Moshe Rabbeinu says, okay, I'm going to mimic my Rabbi, the Rabban Shalom. So it says, the Pasuk, that Moshe Rabbeinu picked up his tent and also went out of the Machim. So Chazal said the Medrash said, Hashem said to Moshe Rabbeinu, that's not the way this works. We're going to make a deal. Whatever I do, you do the opposite. If I'm removing myself from Kali Yisrael, you have to go to Kali Yisrael. Because you can't, we can't have both of us removed. So someone has to work with them. If I'm, if I'm by Kali Yisrael, then fine, you could take a break. You could go on sabbatical. But if I'm going on sabbatical, then you have to be there with them. So if the Rabbani Shalom is removing his Shefa from a year because of the Klippas that are being yoinik, and he can't allow that Shefa to come, so the deacon have the responsibility to come and to fix the situation. So there's two basic approaches that Sadiq can have to fix a situation. One is more long-term, and one's more short-term. What's the long-term? The long-term approach is, get rid of the parasites. Get rid of the parasites. So slowly but surely build up the Yid to remind him or her who he is, who she is. Be mechazek them in Yiddish guide. Slowly build them up to where they identify themselves with their neshama. The avoid of a tzaddik, when the tzaddik can pick them up, and the Yid ultimately is then raised to a level where all the parasites remain on the bottom, right? person moves from katnas, from a low place where all the bugs are, to a place of godless where he's in a higher place, and then there's no, there's no klipas in that place. So the person raised, no, no, then fine. Now, now the shefa comes, and that's kavaldik, and that's the tachlis. That's the tachlis. That's the ultimate job of the tzaddik, to get you to that place where there's no concern of, of, of klipas. No, but what's going to be until that happens? You still need shefa, you still need a parnasa, you still need brachas until that happens. And there's another Eitzah. The other Eitzah is for a tzaddik who in his personal life has no concern at all about this particular type of shefa causing any issues in his personal life because he's so, dis- he's so removed from that type of parasite. And that tzaddik who in his personal life there's no concern at all for this type of shefa for him to have an issue with for the tzaddik then to be dafka the shlich to give you that type of shefa. And when the shefa comes into your life from that tzaddik, it comes with his stamp. And as long as it comes with his stamp, automatically it has that protection. Let's go to, the, let's say, give an example of the Rishim Baruchai. That Torah that Rishim Baruchai revealed, which is a what? That you could be Mekayim, the mitzvah of Talmud Torah, by just saying Shema in the morning and Shema in the night. That shefa being given to people that have parasites, Right, that have uh, the klipas, uh, the, the klipa that's called bittel taira, still attached to them is a dangerous thing, because what's going to happen when that when that shefa comes to the, that Jew's life? So it'll th- that shefa is going to be siphoned off by the yitzhar of bittel taira, and what's going to happen? He's not going to take taira seriously anymore because now he knows that he's yotzes on by just davening shachris and myrut. Therefore, if any tzaddik that were never no tzaddik is allowed to reveal that truth. Because by revealing that truth, it's going to be self, it's going to be more destructive to the person receiving it if he's has a yitzar for bittul tire. There's only one type of tzaddik that's going to be allowed to give over that light, and that's only a tzaddik who 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 in his life there's no musik of bittul tire. And when that tzaddik who is who in his personal life there's bchalal no musik of bittul tire, then that light that's descending from him to the to the rest of the world. Is automatically imbued and stamped with that, with that, with with that, uh, with that, with that shmira of the tzaddik who's completely removed from the, from from that Indian of bittul So when that light descends into the masses, 
It dafke has to come from Rishim Baichai. It's only Rishim Baichai who in his personal life has no hasog of Bithl Torah, and there's no, there's, no, there's no point of contact between Rishim Baichai's light and the Yitzhar that's called Bithl Torah. They, they repel each other. There's no, there's no, there's no connecting link between Rishim Shimon and Bithl Torah. So Dafka Rib Shimon, therefore, he's the only one that can take that can allow us to participate of that light without there being a concern of it connecting itself to Bittal Tar, because the source that it's coming from is a tzaddik who's completely removed from Bittal Tar. But if you have any less tzaddik who in, in his personal life has episashaiches to Bittal Tar, then if that light comes to your life, then already there's a point of contact. Because even in its origin point, there's a subtle point of contact, right? And so now, if that light were to come to your life, it'll become overwhelmingly abused by the Yitzhar, Bittal Tar. You follow this? Mm-hmm. It's Davka the Tzaddik who, again, the, the, the Shef that's coming, now the point is like this, the Shef that's coming into your life, we always have to be, have to be aware, is, is it able to be, to, be on, uh, to be enmeshed with a Yitzhar? What are the negative side effects of this Shef? Can it be siphoned off by a particular parasite? If the root that this light is coming from is from a tzaddik who has absolutely no shaykhs to that type of parasite, then when it comes to your life, also it's not going to have any shaykhs to that type of parasite. But if it's coming from a tzaddik who epis has a shaykhs to such a, an achiza of, of the Yitzhahara, then when it comes to your life, it's going to be even more destructive. It's Davka, Rabbi Shimrai Chai, who in his personal life has absolutely zero shaykhs to Bittu Torah, so he, he could then give us such a giloy of what, of that learning in the morning, learning at night is good enough, and without it being a concern, that it will be abused and eventually flow into Bittal Torah. Because it's coming from a person who has no shaykhs to Bittal Torah. The same thing is with Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yechanan is revealing to us this Pasuk, this truth, which is a what? That Gehenim does not swallow up a yid, that even one mitzvah protects you from Gehenim. Weiter, that's a light, but it could be abused. If you have any side within you, if, the, if, there's, if there's any, if, if there's a, there's a Yetzar that's called laziness. There's a Yetzar that's called uh, not Mimakaya Mitzvahs. So if that light comes to your life, and that light of what? That light that says one mitzvah will protect you from Ghana. And that light is, is a light that's able to be, to be uh, attacked. It's able to be siphoned off. Then now that it comes into your life and you have a big Yetzar for being Mavatal Mitzvahs, that's, that's a very destructive light. Therefore, it's Davka Rabbi Yechanan who's allowed to reveal such a truth. Only Rabbi Yechanan, who is in who his personal life, is completely removed from Bittal Mitzvahs and is completely connected to Shmir Sa Mitzvahs in the, in the most, in most powerful way. So only a tzaddik like Rabbi Yechanan is able to give off such a light without there being any concern of that light being destructive of it being siphoned off into a parasite that's called Bittal Mitzvahs. It's coming from a tzaddik who is completely disconnected from Bittal Mitzvahs. And the same thing it is with, with, with Rav Chani ben Daisa. So Rav Daisa is bringing Shefa to the world of Parnassah, right? Kol ben'i. But the problem is, like the Gemara says, but wealth can, can be destructive. It could bring to, to Gaiva, it could bring to Taivas, it could bring to you know, all the things that, that are no good. So how does the Rabbani Shalom ensure that he's going to bring Shefa to the world in a way where there's no concern of that light being siphoned off by Yetzar? The answer is, where Davka coming through a tzaddik who in his personal life has zero shaykhs to any of the negative sides of Gashmi. It's Davka Rechanim ben Daisa who is living his life of absolute precious, has no hasag of what it means Gashmi. That's a tzaddik who could bring mashpia, who could bring Gashmi to the world, and without there being a concern of the Gashmi flowing into negative places. Because it's coming from a tzaddik who the musig of, of Gashmi flowing into negative places is completely foreign. And the same thing is with Rishayla, the same thing it is with, with like the Baba Sali, these types of things. It's Davka, it's Davka Tzad, like Rishayla, who, who had no shaykhist to Gashmi himself, who didn't understand the musig of, of seeing a piece of chicken as a piece of chicken. It was all Irish, it was all shame sectation. It's all it was. And because of that, that's why he's able to bring a shafa of Gashmi as to Yidin, even before they raise themselves up, right? Remember, so there's always two approaches. Like the long term approach is the Tzaddik working with Yidin. And getting them to a place of where they're they're holding, where the shefa won't be destructive for them. But what about until they reach that madrega? So until they reach that madrega, the Rabbanu Shem sends other tzaddikim who, in their personal lives, have no shaykhs to those negative side effects of the shefa, and they're after the ones to bring the shefa to the world. 
So it's Davka the Tzaddik who has no Shaykhis to Gashmias, he's the source of Gashmias. Davka the Tzaddik who has no Shaykhis to Bittal Torah, he's the source of the, of, of the light that says, even morning and night, even Shema the morning, Shema and night, you have design. It's Davka the Tzaddik who has no Shaykhis to be lazy in mitzvahs, is the one to tell you that even one mitzvah protects you from Gehenna. That's the way it goes. And that's exactly why, you know, going close to Lag Weimar, that's why people have, uh, it, it, it's not just people, there, there is always this concern of like, you know, when a person spreads Pneum Satara, right? Uh, what's Pneum Satara about? So what Pneum Satara is about, how close you are with the Ravon Mishlam. You thought you're far, you thought, you, your mamish ain't a move on. That's what Pneum Satara is about. So everyone always is concerned. Well, if you talk about that, then it could be abused, right? Because the guy, uh, maybe the guy should be told that you're a million miles away from God, and now you should, you'll, you'll start coming closer to him. But if I tell a yid who is anyway lazy, right, who is anyway, you know, doesn't care, and I tell them, Mom, is you have no idea what kus is saturated in your life, you're, you're close, you're the, the closest thing you have in your, in your life is a Rabbanu Shlomo, then maybe that light will be abused. But the answer is, that's why, we, that's why it's called Kabbalah. The reason why it's called Kabbalah is because it's received <laughs> from the Tzaddik Hadars. And these are not Torahs, these are not Inyanim that we, that we speak about by ourselves. We're, we speak about them as a chain that goes back to Tzaddikim that had no Shaykhis to the eight Zaharas that we're dealing with. To Tzaddikim that had no Shaykhis to there being any laziness at all in their Avayda. So when you have a Tzaddik like Rishon Ba'ichoy, like Dariza, like Rashash, like the Baal Shem, like Rabbi Nachman, like Tzaddikim like this, that they're completely on fire with their Rabbanu Shalom, then and they're the ones telling you that you're close to God, then there's no concern about that Torah being abused. Because it's coming from a tzaddik who the concept of abusing such a light is completely foreign. If it's coming from a lesser person who has a shtikl netiyah to be lazy, then yeah, it's very unhealthy for such a tzaddik and destructive for such a tzaddik to say over such Torah. But Davkit coming from Sadiqim had no musik of what it means to be to be uh, not running to God. So such Sadiqim that are always on fire, they're always running to God, those are the Sadiqim that can give us the biggest coolest. That's the Nakuda. Which Tzadik has the schus to be the one to give the biggest coolest to the generation? Davka the Sadiqim that in their own lives are the biggest machmir. That's the way it goes. If the biggest machmir in the world, within your own personal life, then you can give the biggest coolest to the world. So Rishim Ba'ichai, the, the Chavev, and so on, the biggest machmirim in terms of Bittal Torah, they could give the biggest kulas in terms of Bittal Torah. Rabbi Yochanan, who's the biggest machmir in terms of Shemir Samitzvahs, he could give the biggest kula in terms of Shemir Samitzvahs. Rabbi Shail, who's the biggest machmir in terms of Prishas, he could be the one to give a shef of bracha and on all levels. No, so Hashem should help us. We should be zechut to have those two types of tzaddikim. Tzaddikim that sort of help us along, that bring a shefa that's protected, that's insulated, that's not, that doesn't have any concern of it being abused and siphoned off because of the unbelievable tzaddikim that it's coming from. And we should be zechut to then be makash ourselves as well to those tzaddikim that pick us up and raise us up and, and, and eventually develop us into people that those concerns are b'chol not shayach to. So we should be zeichet to your kasher cells, and the tzaddik should be Paul Yeshua, as he always is, and he always was. Yeah, it's called tzaddik. Mir of Meinu Hamei. Shkaya.